breakfast correctly. Uh, you know, what I'm wondering about is, is when you're running late in the morning, you know, there's no time to eat, what do you do? How about just grabbing some coffee and not eating anything? Although it may not make sense to you, that may be the right answer. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Asher, I'm editor over here at bloomerboomer.com, a publication for folks like us over 50 and beyond. Now today, I am going to talk to uh, the author, Gregory Charlop, an MD, an award-winning physician and speaker, uh, and an aging expert and author of Why Doctors Skip Breakfast, Wellness Tips to Reverse Aging treat depression, and get a good night's sleep? Well, we'll get to Dr. Charlop in just one moment. Now, if you haven't watched our shows, there are some, um, oh, I might call them little quirky differences, like I am hooked onto a video game here, you can see behind me, and I would love to find uh, some of you who want to join me in my playroom. Right now, I'm hooked on Journey where I explore an ancient, mysterious world. I soar above the ruins and I, I glide across sands to discover its secrets with stunning visuals and a Grammy-nominated musical score. What more can you ask for? We'll have more on that in a moment. There are other great guests this week following today's show with Dr. Charla. We are going to have Jen LaGrisha uh, about how she was able to pivot careers to be a full-time author. And then we have Steve Sexton. He is a financial consultant on how to navigate the new normal. And we are live on many other platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Bloomer Boomer. And like and follow us to hear more about what's happening. In the meantime, let's get started. And remember, I love marmalade. Well, Dr. Charlop, I am really, really excited you are here, and how are you managing in the circumstances that we're living today? Well, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. It's a lot of fun, and I love the work you're doing, and I love your audience. And I don't know, things are pretty good. You know, I tell you, um, it's tough. A lot of people are sick, and a lot of people are worried about the economy and jobs, but... I try to see the bright side in things, and I like the fact that I've had more time with my family. I've had more time to write. Uh, it's reminded me that I need to call some relatives and friends and neighbors that I haven't spoken to in a while. It reminds you to kind of do stuff you, you, I think you take for granted. Yeah, you know what? I think in just that little uh, little synopsis, you really explained it well about what really all of us are doing. Because yeah, I I have been uh, reaching out to my uh, my cousins up in Canada and uh, to my son out of, out in Atlanta. So yeah, I think that's uh, we're making the best of a, of a difficult situation. Exactly. You know, and the the preface that you wrote uh, in in your in your book does a, a beautiful job, I think, in setting up the book. Now I'm going to pull just one sentence uh, from it. Uh, the room is uh, full of distinguished surgeons preparing to go into battle uh, for ten to twelve hours. Uh, yet they choose to start the day on an empty stomach. Why? What do these doctors know? You know, that seems like a great place for you to start start the story of, of, of what you've discovered. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, so I spent many years, I'm a physician, an anesthesiologist, and I spent many years, we were talking before the show, working at a major hospital in the Bay Area, a major tertiary hospital. We took care of a lot of very sick patients. And before we'd start going into the operating room, you know, we'd all be there in the morning and we'd, we'd chit chat, you know, and we would, catch up on what was going on and what our families were doing or if there was some new study or we would talk about the day and all around us there'd be all kinds of surgical tools and books and journals and everything else and everybody pretty much drinks coffee but hardly anyone was eating breakfast and so we were chit-chatting and we were catching up and we were drinking coffee but but almost nobody was eating and I kind of took this for granted that this is just sort of how people are. Because I, I don't eat, I'm, I fast, and a lot of the other surgeons do the same. But then afterwards, I looked around and I noticed that everybody else was eating breakfast. You know, everybody else, was they were eating their donuts and their bagels and everything else for breakfast. And it wasn't, we were kind of the minority. 
And I think that made me realize that as physicians, we are not doing a good job of communicating our own lifestyle choices to other people. Yeah, um, but in fact, in your book, it seems like you made a discovery that uh, people function okay without eating breakfast, or am I misreading that? That's exactly right. So there's a lot of reasons not to eat breakfast, and hopefully we'll get into some of them. One of the biggest is it seems to be anti-aging and actually seems to slow down aging. But, but also just in terms of thinking, and I tell you, so I wrote almost the whole book while I was fasting. And I find for me, you know, I, I usually, I try to have dinner by six or seven. And my goal is to eat the next day for lunch, maybe around 11 or 12. So, and I get up early, I get up at like five or so. So I try to do most of my work before lunch if I can. And I notice right after I eat lunch, you know, my thinking goes downhill. Yes, indeed, and uh, I know that is the case for me. Now, one attributes breakfast, though, to giving us the necessary energy we need to work and to concentrate, but uh, maybe you're suggesting that we get a little tired and fatigued after that, is a similar to lunch. You know, it's funny. So there's this whole thing everybody talks about breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. We have to eat it. You know, we've all heard it. I've heard it. But the funny thing is, if you look into the origin of this, we think that that concept came from Dr. Kellogg about 100 years ago. And, and it's the same Kellogg that, that you know, the guy right, who Michigan, was... In Michigan, right? Yeah, I think you're right. I think he was. Yeah, he was uh, right. with sort of a religious group, and they, they thought that, that if you eat certain grains, you're less uh -huh, likely uh -huh. to be promiscuous. And so he and his colleagues, you know, they got into this breakfast thing, and they, they were the ones who started this breakfast is the most important meal of the day thing and and in a way like you have to give the guy credit it was maybe one of the biggest marketing coups ever because what he came up with a hundred years ago we're we're still saying today yeah yeah you're really right about that but it, it kind of stands to reason so uh, uh that history uh, doesn't go back to the uh, beginning of time you know um, and before we go a little bit uh, any any further now you just are described as a founder of an elite wellness and any anti-aging telemedicine clinic in Beverly Hills where uh, you see athletes and high achievers. That's, that's really intriguing to me. Now my curiosity gets the best of me. Can you, can you tell us about some of those famous athletes and how uh, high achievers uh, do what they do and uh, how they learn to achieve better through you? <laughs> Sure. Now, obviously, I can't give any names, but... Right. I was, uh, I was hoping you might, but I knew better. <laughs> Yeah, I can't give any names, but this is what I'll tell you. Uh, so there's a lot. So I, 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 I was in the Bay and I moved down to Beverly Hills about a year ago. And so when I first moved down here, I started doing mostly plastic surgeries stuff in Beverly Hills. So a lot of my clients were celebrities and, and actors and, you know, these Instagram people. And through that, I started learning about their lifestyles and how they eat and what they do. And I had just finished writing the book, Why Doctors Skip Breakfast. And so it made sense to try to apply this to these athletes and celebrities in the area to learn how they could live better lives and be more efficient. And I tell you, people talk about celebrities. I know everybody makes fun of them. And, but these people, you know, a lot of them, they, they, they want to be better. You know, they want to they wanna eat better. They want to be healthier. And part of it is it's their brand. You know, if you're a fashion model or something, you, you have to have the right physique for it. You, know, you can't be over. It's harder, you know, if you're overweight, if you're a fashion model. But these people, they, I think they want to do the right thing. And so we talk about nutrition strategies, what to eat, what not to eat, when to eat, which is surprisingly important, the right way to exercise and the right supplements to take. I mean, there's so many supplements out there. People don't know which ones are the good ones and which ones are worthless. I mean, there's so much that, that we could do for our health that people would do if they only knew how much of a difference it made. Oh gosh, it is mind boggling, all the stuff uh, that's being advertised. Uh, but uh, hey, I'll tell you a secret. My dad uh, was a, a shrink in Beverly Hills. Now, can you imagine some of the clients he had and, and patients, but he never told me a thing. <laughs> But I think that was funny. Um, you know, uh, all the people that I've uh, lived with have uh, have always had some kind of a struggle 
with breakfast. You know, personally, it's never been a real huge deal to me, maybe because I also love coffee, but I will say a, a croissant and marmalade and coffee, you know, that's to die for. But, but why do we struggle so much with breakfast? Well, I think, well, let me just say, I love coffee. And I'm a big advocate of it. And in, in the book, we give a bunch of recommendations. And and I made my first spot that you should drink coffee. And there's actually lots of great evidence on this, that coffee is also anti-aging. It reduces the risk of a lot of neurodegenerative diseases. We think it reduces the risk of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, certain types of cancer. I mean, there's a lot of health benefits to coffee. But I think the reason why people struggle with breakfast so much is we've been acculturated to do it. and so our body gets used to things. And so the trick, I mean, really the reason in my mind you should skip breakfast is because I think that intermittent fasting, daily intermittent fasting is a very healthy thing. To do. And you've probably heard about it, people talk about it. And the way that works is that you try to go for maybe 16 or 18 hours a day without eating. And so for me, if I finish dinner, say at six, and then the next day I have lunch at 12, I've gone 18 hours without eating because sleep counts as part of your fast. And there's a lot of health benefits to it. It's anti-aging. It seems to reduce these autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. It probably reduces the risk of Alzheimer's. It, it probably helps prevent depression and a lot of other problems. And so what's cool about it is if you do it, you almost can eat whatever you want during your eating window. I, mean, I still give recommendations on what to eat, but you can almost eat whatever you want. The fasting itself is the important thing. And once you do this for a while, your body gets used to it and it's easy. Now, I, you know, I fast and I'm almost never hungry before it's time to eat. It's, I mean, it takes a few days. And when people start the first day or two, it may be difficult. But you get used to it and then you don't miss breakfast at all. Yeah, I think you're really on to something here uh, because when I eat breakfast, I feel a little weighted down and a little bit heavy. Uh, and I know, are you saying that there's a, a correlation, and uh, you suggested there might be a correlation between uh, you know, missing your breakfast, I guess, or, and longevity, or maybe it's just coffee and longevity? Well, the coffee helps. There's no question uh, about it. But, but the missing your breakfast does too. And there's a few reasons why. And here's the thing that's, that's shocking. Our understanding of aging has really changed a lot in the last few years. And this is all based on research out of Harvard and UCLA and USC and MIT, big, big name places. We used to think that aging was caused by the gradual decay of the body. Years go by, we take wear and tear, and that's how we age. But we actually know that that isn't, and, and this is recent, that this isn't how we age. And we can make a few decisions to, to really slow down and reverse aging. And here's an example I like to give, and it's in the book, Why Doctors Skip Breakfast. Imagine you have a wooden table, and it's a nice table, but let's say you leave this wooden table outdoors. Over the years, this table will decay. It'll get sun on it, and it will blanch from the sun. It'll rain, rain will come on it, it'll start to rot. Maybe bugs or termites will find it, and they'll start to eat it. And this is kind of how we thought of aging in the past. Now, you could do little things to try to fix this, like you could uh, spray bug spray, for example, or you could uh, you know, repaint it or something. Or you could just bring the table inside. And that one act of bringing this wooden table inside will make the table last much longer. Now, sure, the table eventually will, will break, nothing lasts forever, but you can do one thing and you make that table last much longer. And so our aging is a similar thing. It's not the wear and tear gradually over time like we thought of with the wooden table. It's caused by some genetic switches flipping the wrong way. Sorry, there's a plane going by, I'm not sorry. It's caused by, probably from a military base here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not too far You're from not one. far away, huh? Yeah, so it's, it's caused by these genetic switches that uh, are turned the wrong way with time and a few little errors, but they're all fixable, which is what's exciting. And so. I'll tell you this, and this is, this is a striking example. If you do research on animals, and people do this all the time, they try different diets on animals. You could do a keto diet, you could do an organic diet, a vegetarian diet, a this or that, you, whatever you want. The one diet that has consistently been shown to make animals live longer is fasting or reduced calorie diets. That's it. And it's by a lot, like 40%. 
So if you take a if you take a, a, a rodent, let's say, like a, a mouse or a rat, and it's even true with monkeys, and you fast or calorie restrict them, they could live 40% longer. I mean, it's very, very dramatic. Yeah. Well, look, at, before I forget, I want to get into a couple of more things, but uh, you also have a website. Uh, could you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So I, my website, if you want to contact me, I'd have to learn a little bit more about aging. I have a blog on it. It's GregoryCharlotteMD.com, and that's spelled G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-C-H-A-R-L-O-P-M-D.com. And I have another website that's geared specifically towards athletes, and that's RetiredAthleteHealth.com, RetiredAthleteHealth.com. And that has lots of information about health for athletes. It also has a blog. You can contact me through either one of them. And, and I'm also pretty... Your active book on is LinkedIn on, and Facebook. Oh, okay. And I know your book is also on uh, Amazon. Yes. So right now it's available as an ebook, a Kindle uh -huh. ebook, or a paperback. And I'm hoping within the next few weeks it should be out as an audio book as well. I see. Um, you know, and I know that uh, you say the story uh, in the book or of the book is is you will introduce us to a, a new world of wellness uh, medicine and shatter some old myths that are uh, quietly ruining our life and show us the path to a vibrant health. Now, can you tell us some more of the secrets on that? And I think you've already uh, let one out. Uh, breakfast, uh, leaving it alone. Right. So there's a few good ones, and, and to be truthful, the, you'll get the most bang for your buck you know, if you combine as many of these together as you can. And in the book, you know, I, I, it's probably too dry to go over now, but the book kind of explains why we think some of these things work. But, but I'll give you some of the easy ones. The first one, other than breakfast and coffee, is sleep. People don't appreciate how important sleep is. And it turns out that when you miss sleep, even one night of sleep, that's very aging. And I don't know how they did this, but they talked these volunteers into getting spinal taps. You know, when you stick a needle in the back and they sample the, the, you know, the fluid around the spinal cord. And they looked at volunteers who had just one night of poor sleep. And the, 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 blood, the chemistry of the fluid by their brain looked just like someone who had Alzheimer's disease from one night of bad sleep. So we know that sleep is a very powerful way of preventing cancer, preventing depression, preventing Alzheimer's and other neurologic disorders. So, so one of the big ones is make sure you get enough sleep. And you really want to get around eight hours of sleep. And we give a lot of tips about how to maximize the quality of your sleep. A lot of people, they have trouble falling asleep or they, they wake up a lot. So we give some advice about how to do that. But sleep is very, very important. And meditation is actually another one that people don't think about. It, it turns out that, and there's some really cool science on this, that, that meditation or mindfulness or gratitude, I, I'm kind of lumping them together, but they're all a little different. When you do those things, those are anti-aging. Every time you say thank you or you appreciate what someone does for you, you you've just done, you've made a step towards helping reduce your own aging. Well, those are in very, very important tips, and uh, I can't agree more because I, in one way or another, I do a little, a bit of that here and there. And uh, it, for me, it's not a lot of effort, but we're not talking about me, we're talking about people who are watching today. So I, I hope that that helps. So um, anything else do uh, you want to leave folks with? Uh, because I'm going to give them a little update on uh, the game journey that I'm, uh, I'm playing here. But I love what you have to say. Uh, any final remarks or any closing statements, if you will? I, I would just like to touch on depression. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Okay. But it, it turns out that depression is a big problem. And, and even since the book came out, it's become even worse. You know, with, with the coronavirus yeah. and the quarantines and social isolation, it's, it's really terrible. And there are, there's an explosion of people using antidepressant medications and anti-anxiety medicines. And people are feeling really isolated and alone. And so what I wanted to say is, if you have depression or think you might, I would really encourage you to get checked out for it. And there's actually great telemedicine or teletherapy options where you can go speak to a counselor without leaving your home. Uh, and then, but the other thing is, it, it, I, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, I would try to encourage you to reach out to your neighbors and your friends and your relatives because they may be suffering from isolation in their homes. And 
your call or your FaceTime or, or your letter or, or you sending them a nice book or gift basket or whatever, that may really make a big difference for people. So we all have to look out for each other, I think now more than ever. And, 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 and we need to look out for ourselves and we're not depressed and we need to look out for our relatives and neighbors and friends because they may be suffering in silence. We may not even know it. That is so true and such uh, wise words that uh, it's a great reminder and I certainly appreciate you mentioning that. Uh, let's see, so we've covered about where you get the book and how to get, reach you. Um, and I just want to thank you, uh, you, you so much, uh, Gregory, and uh, the, the author of uh, Why Doctors Skip Breakfast, Wellness Tips to Reverse Aging, Treat Depression, and Get a Good Night's Sleep. Dr. Gregory Charloff, uh, you can and watch the replay uh, on Facebook and YouTube and some of the other um, outlets we have, as well as bloomerboomer.com. Uh, hey, thanks so much. Uh, it was great having you here today. Great. Thanks for having me on. I enjoyed the conversation. I did too, likewise. Well, I'm going to just give a quick update here on, uh, on the game that I'm playing today, Journey. And, uh, okay, this is a wonderful game. And the, the, the fact of the matter is, it's about a two-hour game. So what I'm doing right now is the game you're seeing right now, I'm actually recording. So I'm going to be playing this game after we sign off until the close and then replay it again tomorrow and talk a little bit about it uh so you know join us in because uh it's a it's a beautiful game i i think you, you know i'd love for people to try it there's wonderful music uh, a, a kind of a great uh, mystery about it and um it, it's it's a great way to spend some time so uh i thank you all for watching and uh and, and in the meantime um don't forget i love marmalade